suffered a seizure last week at the end of their ball game at home and was just released from St. Luke's Hospital yesterday in St. Louis. And here he is today. And if he was to show up, we thought he'd be up here with us in the booth, but that's not the case. He's down on the sideline. And off this time to Cornell Johnson. He is met rudely. And we're just over three minutes to go. Marlon Heaston with the stop. Frank Johnson also in there. Southern Illinois jumped out to a 7-0 lead on their first drive. It took 13 plays. Indiana State was able to come right back and tie it up 7-7. As you see the short pick up there by Johnson. And then it's been all Southern Illinois since then. Two consecutive possessions of just six plays resulting in touchdowns for the Salukis and they lead it 21 to 7. We're going to bring out the chains and see if Johnson picked up that first down for Indiana State. 3.02 to go first half. And JJ certainly this is a big drive to end it the first half they hope it will end the first half or at least keep the balls out of the, the hands of uh, Southern Illinois make sure that they don't get a chance to have that final drive of the half well this is a good system to have on the field when, when it's late in the half or late in the game because they're comfortable with throwing the ball airing it out you know, it's a passing passing system and this quarterback has good command of it and, and understands it well and he can can touch the field anywhere he wants to. Well, if you like the offense, you're seeing it here in this first half of the 400 yards combined with these two teams. Play action. Wants to throw. Wide open is the man, Carl Berman. And steps out of bounds. Berman picks up the first down, and it's a pickup of 14 on the play. Uh-oh. Yellow hanky. And back there where they're uh, tossing that flag, many times you're going to get offensive holding, but you see some of the Indiana State players are clapping as if to say that's going to go against Southern Illinois and it does. Let's see if this is a late hit or a roughing the passer. That's going to be what roughing the call the is. Passer, number 55 in the defense. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. So roughing the passer. And he came on a blitz that time and he figured, hey, I got this far. I might as well go ahead and hit him. <laughs> That's Tony Ranella, the senior from Marion, Illinois, former walk on for the Salukis. He's sixth on their team in tackles. And Indiana State's not playing like an 0-7 team. They're showing some good signs of success on offense. That play right there, that comeback, it was well-timed from the quarterback to the receiver, and then it was wide open. They need to continue to do some of these things. 2.48 to go, first half. This could be a huge drive for the Sycamores to put up a score. Baggett steps up, wants to unload. He does. Looking long, adjusting on it, it is caught. And it's a touchdown. It's a touchdown for Berman. 42-yard touchdown reception. This guy can touch the field anywhere he wants to. And, and you know, Southern Illinois is only bringing three guys from D-line now. And they're backing people up. But sometimes when the play breaks down, that's when the big plays happen. And he just threw it up for his guy. And, and he made an adjustment. That was a great adjustment by Carl. You know, the 5'10", 170 pound junior from, from Florida. Treasure Island, Florida at that. You got a treasure right there. This going drive. And Berman has two touchdown receptions today. Great adjustment on this. His first reception for the touchdown was an outstanding catch, and so is this one. Let's see if he's got the uh, handle on the ball as he crosses that goal line. I'd say yes. He carried it into the end zone. Across the pylon, across the goal line, that was it. And I'll tell you what, Baggett nearly stepped over the uh, line of scrimmage as he delivered that, was uh, feeling the pressure. Five plays, 82 yards, a minute 45. Let's see if he stepped over the line of scrimmage. It was awfully close. Well, that's quarterback savvy. You know, these guys usually have a mental, mental uh, edge on where the line of scrimmage is, and he takes that step right there and knows exactly where it was and, and gets the ball up. And it doesn't matter if he did cross it because they, they put the points up on the board. It's over with now. So just like that. Indiana State back in the game with 2.38 to go, 21-14. But they need to stop defensively, J.J. That's where they have really struggled. They've been able to go at the defensive corners, the backs of the Salukis of Southern Illinois. They started today with two freshmen, and that's been a, a point of contention for them defensively, the fact that they are eighth in the conference in passing defense. And uh, obviously, Indiana State is trying to take advantage of that today. Thank you. 
So 2.38 to go. This can be taken by Whitlock on his own 11. Across the 20 to the 25. Whitlock to the 30. And he had about two men to beat. Gets it out near the 40-yard line. A return of 30 on the play. And they gave him good field position to start this drive off. And so little noise has had good, pretty good field position all night. And J.J., that's the last guy you want to kick it to. He is 32 yards per kickoff return, which is fifth best in the country. He picked up 40 on that return. There's a look at the offense, and we've seen a bunch. Closing in on 500 combined for the day. And they graduated two good backs, Brandon Jacobs and Terry Jackson, both went to NFL teams, and, and they said this kid has a chance itself. And he can return kicks and catch balls and run balls. He, he has a chance. Sam Bursky keeps it himself, then brought down by Kyle Mitchell, the senior from East Chicago, Illinois. He's been all over the place today for that Sycamore's defense. And he's the man. He's the heart of this defense, and, and that puts him over the limit right there. But he came out in front of the homecoming crowd, and he's making plays today. He, he's hungry, and, and they didn't fool him on that play. He's all over Sam Bursky. It's a loss of four on the play. Sycamores need a stop with under two minutes to go. 21-14 in favor of the Salukis. From the shotgun, Joel Simbersky, the player of the year in the Gateway Conference, looking to throw. Oh, Slings hold. it out left side, a flag on the play. I saw the it Looks hold. like it could be a hold as Mitchell is getting up and pleading his case. And, and, you know, he beat him outside the last time. This time they did an inside stunt. Good call by Coach West on the twist. They did a little text here. The end and, end and tackle did a... Did a a, a twist there, and, and he caught the guard off, off, uh, caught the guard off guard, <laughs> and uh, he didn't get in position, and they had to bring him down, or, or Sambersky would have took another shot. That was Jerry Green, whistle for holding there. So the first play was a loss, and the, this one will be two. Holding. Offense number 64, 10 yard penalty, three spot, still second down. Big old Jerry Green, he goes at near 300 pounds. Please. 143 on the A senior from Oklahoma. And they don't have too many seniors on that offensive line. He's, he's a minority being an upperclassman out there. They got a lot of young guys, and they've been working with these guys. And last week, they got a lot of different looks, and, and it, and it foiled, uh, foiled their plans. And, and they went back to the drawing board and, and tried to make it easy for these young guys. The original line of scrimmage is at the 41. They're going to have to throw the football. Simbersky sees his man, and it's caught by Alan Turner. Big pick up there on a second and long. It'll be third down and about seven to go. It's going to be hard to stop these deep outs unless they have, you know, like a man under look or something like that. But but they're just taking advantage of it. Sambersky has a lot of time to sit in that pocket, and when he when he does that, he can kill a defense. Well, here we go. Big big third down here with 1:31 to go. Third down conversion for Southern Illinois. They're just two of five. Looking to throw with all kinds of time. There's your first down. Turner again. The exact same play. Alan Turner, the sophomore. Evidently, they saw this in the, in the film last week, and they said we can we can take advantage of it. And they try to they try to bring a little blitz, and it and it didn't get there. And that's that play action. Instead of putting the fullback in the flat, they leave him in the block this time, and he picked up picked up uh, the all all everything guy Kyle Mitchell and, and, and put a. Put the fullback on and then put the put our key on the blitzing cornerback. Uh, the shotgun, Sambersky. They're going to throw it again, and why not? And the catch is made by Corey Payne, his second reception of the afternoon. The tackle made by Ladrell Bryant, the senior from Muncie, Indiana. And just like that, I mean, it's like one, two, three, as easy as they can make it. Here come the Salukis offensively. They average 45 points a game and nearly 500 yards of total offense. They're closing in on 300 yards of total offense just in the first half alone. Sambersky, shotgun. He'll swing it out, and the catch is made by Whitlock. And he'll step out of bounds. And he's inside that 25-yard line. He steps out at the 22. 
You can just see Samberski is just so patient, J.J., and he just takes what the defense gives him. Well, the coaches are putting him in good situations, too. I mean, they're realizing that there's nobody in the flats. They're getting they're getting over-the-top coverage. They're dropping back. They don't want to get burned on a big play. But, you know, what Southern Illinois is doing is taking advantage of the little things, that, taking advantage of the underneath things that are open, and the coaches are just putting them in good positions. Second down, eight to go. Simberski avoids one man, and it's going to be caught inside the five. Good catch there by Alan Turner. That's his third reception on this drive. And of course, once you're down in college football, that's it. it it's pro little. game. You can make that catch and get back up and run, but not in the college game. And this is a, a tough throw. He just had to sling it out there, and he took a hit. That was. Uh, uh, Rich Gannon, as he threw a kind of sidearm out there, just laid it out for his receiver to make a play one on one. But as a DB, you have to read this guy. If you see your receiver drop his hips and get, get drop his hips and get out of the break, you need to be right with him, and, and that's all footwork. And he needed to come down there and at least smack the ball down. But now they have a prime opportunity to get another score before halftime, which will be crucial for the Sycamores one in the halftime. Well, it's a big, big road test for Southern Illinois after last week. They allowed 61 points, the most that they have allowed since 1999. But it's a huge game in many ways. They're four and two overall, two and one within the conference. See Western Kentucky at three and zero. Youngstown State is at three and zero. Northern Iowa, we're going to see them in our Gateway Conference game of the week next weekend. They're at two and one. Then Missouri State one and two. Illinois State one and two. Western Illinois over three. Indiana State trying to pick up their first victory of the season. But uh, right now. You can see, J.J., the Sycamores have no answer for Joel Samberski in this offense. Not too many people have had answers for Joel Samberski. I mean, that's why he's a player of the year in the conference. Coaches just really feel this guy makes a big difference with this offense, and he's proven it today. We're going to visit with Mike Kern, the associate commissioner of the Gateway Conference, a little later today, and he'll talk about the importance of this game and how many teams can get into postseason play from this conference. Wise was there, but then he was stuck. Good defensive play by Warren English Malone, who has three interceptions this season. You can see that uh, old TJ took a pop here. Well, and this is good by, by Coach West. He made an adjustment. They got burnt by the play action, fat, flat pass, the last drive for a touchdown. So it's not going to happen again. He had a guy squatting over there in the flat. Instead of going man, they went zone and, and surprised him. And luckily, uh, JT didn't get a knockout shot there. 47 seconds to play. First half as Scott Warman is chomping at the bit for one of the coaches' interviews down there on the sideline. You got a man wide open. A flag on the play. The option. Whitlock can just walk right in. He will, but let's see what the call is going to be after this touchdown. Archie Whitlock with the touchdown, but I think that may go against Southern Illinois. Let's get the call. Illegal shift. Both backs in motion at the snap against the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Jerry Kill on the sideline. Let's take a look at both backs in motion here. You can't do that. Well, it looked like Arkey was trying to hurry up and get over there because he knew it was a, a, a miscommunication on the defense. They had twins look to the field. But they only had one DB out there on the Twins look, and they were trying to, the coach was trying to tell them to move over, and, and as they were moving over, our key just got a little anxious to get the ball. 42 seconds to go, 21-14, Southern Illinois with the football. It's second down, 10 to go. For that goal line. They're going to throw the football to the corner, and it is caught. Great adjustment on the catch, Alan Turner. What a terrific job on this possession for Southern Illinois. Turner, his fourth reception alone on this drive, and it results in a touchdown, a 10-yard touchdown pass by Samberski. That's his third touchdown throw of the afternoon. And this goes back to the last drive when they were in the red zone, and I had said, said something, look out for the fade, because it looked like they were giving them. They walked up on the on the receiver, and, and, that, and it probably came from the last time when they saw that, and they just used it this time. And that's just good coaching, good call, and having faith in your players. The extra point is up and good. Didn't take long. Only a minute 53 on this drive for Southern Illinois. Eight plays, 59 yards. It results in the score, and it's now 28-14 in favor of the Salukis, and this high-powered offense on the road has already put up 28 points. 
And Samburski, J.J., has already had three touchdown throws. Yeah, this is just a layup here for, for, for offenses. You know, they, they spend time in practice all summer just doing fade drills, you know, just getting close to the end zone and throwing it up. And quarterbacks try to throw it in the bucket out there and let it drop in and let your receiver make it play. But uh, you remember it was second and forever? That's <laughs> right. The same drive, and they came back and, and put it in the end zone. How about Southern Illinois? 41 plays offensively, 300 and 23 yards combined these two teams have already put up over 500 yards Allen Turner a huge day alone on that drive four catches on the day five catches for 74 yards and one touchdown so folks if you like offense you're going to see it here in the Gateway Conference and in particular today with these two teams and somebody told me this was a running conference <laughs> no sir they're throwing it up man a series history you can see that this is the 43rd career meeting and uh, prior to the last two games it was dominated by the Sycamores of Indiana State a series that uh, began back in 1944 here in Terre Haute and it's homecoming weekend here in 2005 that's going to be kicked out of bounds a penalty coming up a decent field position for Indiana State with 37 seconds to go in our first half of play with the way that they've been able to go at the defensive backfield of Southern Illinois, why not? You're going to have decent field position. Go for it. They've got a very good kicker. And Kyle Hooper, that prior to today, was perfect in that uh, field goal. East end of the kickoff field. out of bounds. Ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. So 35-yard line is where they'll take it over. First and 10 for the Sycamores. And here's a look at uh, the kicker. Kyle Hooper. He picked up about 30 yards to get in his range. He's only 37 seconds left. So out of the shotgun, here comes Baggett. Baggett looking to throw the football. Picks up a block. And the catch is made by Berman. He can't get out of bounds. That will not stop the clock. And he actually lost about four on that play. Clock is running. 22, 21. We're down to 20 here in our first half. Shotgun yet again by Blaine Baggett. This time it's swung out left side to Ben Schmidt. That's his first catch of the afternoon. He can't get out of bounds. Clock continues to run, and this very well could do it for our first half of play, and it will. So that's it for the first half. Well over 500 yards put up by both these offenses combined. And it's 28-14 in favor of Southern Illinois. Highly entertaining first half. Neither defense can really stop the other's offense. We await Scott Warman to catch up with one of the coaches down there for our first of two interviews of our halftime festivities here on homecoming weekend. Tom Matukowicz is the linebackers coach for Southern Illinois. And he was going to fill in and uh, do the interview instead of the head coach, Jerry Kill. And let's check in with Scott. All right, Dan, thanks so much, coach. You got the 14 point lead, but I think the bigger story, Coach Kill shows up uh, right at the beginning of the game. Talk about your emotions and your team emotions when he shows up. Well, there's no question, you know, when you have a leader like that, we think he's out, and then all of a sudden he's back in. That's a big time lift. And, you know, right now we're playing good football, we just got to play smarter. Offense is really rolling right now in the first 30 minutes. They are, boy. We sure are proud of how they're doing, and now we got to get the defense caught up, and this will be fun, fun game. And no huddle uh, offense for Indiana State kind of has you guys on the heels a little bit. We are. You know, we just got to play smart. You get third and long, and you give up big pass play. That's not very smart. I mean, that's what we got to go back and do and get them regrouped in the uh, locker room and get them going. Coach, best of luck in the second Thanks. half. Thanks. Thank you. All right, Dan, back to you. Tom Matukowicz, we appreciate his time. Thank you, Scott. Scott's going to be a busy man down there at halftime. Interviews on both sides from the athletic departments of Indiana State and Southern Illinois. Offense, offense, offense in that first half, and it's 28-14, Southern Illinois on top. In 42 games at three different schools, Brandon Jacobs rushed for over 4,000 yards and 52 touchdowns. And after finishing his career with Southern Illinois in 2004, the Louisiana native was drafted by the New York Giants, where he currently backs up all-star Tiki Barber. Jacobs was perhaps the most highly touted transfer in Southern Illinois history. He joined teammates Terry Jackson and Arkey Whitlock in 2004 to form one of the most explosive backfields in college football, one that accounted for 42 of the team's 65 touchdowns 
over 3,000 of the squad's 6,000 plus yards in total offense during his only season with the Salukis. Prior to his only year at SIU, Jacob shared time at halfback at Auburn in 2003 with current NFL running backs Ronnie Brown and Cadillac Williams. Hoping to get an opportunity for more playing time, he transferred to Southern Illinois, and in his one season there, he rushed for nearly 1,000 yards and 19 touchdowns on 150 carries, averaging 6.6 yards a carry and 122 yards a game. He was a first-team All-American and a first-team All-Gateway Conference selection in 2004 while taking Gateway Conference Newcomer of the Year honors. In his first-ever game with SIU, he rushed 18 times for over 100 yards and four touchdowns against Southeast Missouri State. Today, we salute the Gateway Conference's former Saluki, Brandon Jacobs. Back up to you, buddy. All right, Scott, thank you very much. J.J. Smith alongside 28-14. We're at the half. It's homecoming here at uh, Indiana State. And let's take a look at uh, some of those uh, first-half highlights. And uh, J.J. was all offense in that first half. And a lot of Joel Simbersky. But right here, we got your, your big play guy, Antoine Jackson, running it in for, for six for the first touchdown. Yeah, and they're keeping it going. Uh, you know, the Indiana State had some big plays uh, on the first half and showed they can strike too. They got they got a good quarterback over there, and, and he's making plays as well. It was Berman with a 10-yard touchdown reception. Of course, the missed field goal then would lead to some offense on the other side because all of a sudden, then JJ Southern Illinois would come alive. Yeah, Britt Little, he's an All-Conference player. And he can make plays. And they got a lot of playmakers and from from either your fullback, your receivers, your running backs. They're making plays on every drive. Southern Illinois, of course, would have some defensive lapses along the way, in particular with their defensive backfield. That would be another touchdown by Berman, a 42-yard touchdown reception, his second of the game. And then all it took is just a, a minute 53. Southern Illinois would come right back, and it's 28-14 here at the half. And start of the third quarter, just around the corner. Let's check in with Scott Warman, who's standing by with Lou West. All right, Coach, down by 14 as we head into the second half, but you got to be happy with what your offense is providing. Yeah, the offense is playing well and uh, doing a good job of getting after them. Again, it's, uh, as I told them in the locker room, it's a one-sided deal. The defense got to pick up their part. All right, Coach, best of luck in the second half. Thank you, Scott. Guys, Scott, thank you. Perfect timing. Here's the kickoff, and Southern Illinois kicking off to the Sycamores. They trail at home by the score of 28-14. The return, a very short one, and that's where Indiana State will take over first and 10. And a return that time by Alexander Thomas. And a flag on the play, and a short, short return. A flag that uh, is down on the 37-yard line of Southern Illinois. No indication on the penalty. You would figure that's going to go against the Salukis if that's where that flag lies. Let's see if we can pick up something here. This is all timing with the kickoff, the get-offs. That didn't look like anybody was over the line to me. If it was, it was a half a step. Maybe they're trying to help Indiana State out a little bit this second half because they're going to need it because your man all-conference player, Will Whitaker, is coming onto the field as soon as the defense comes out for SIU. Not too happy. So back deep to receive is Andre Forte, along with Cornell Johnson. So they'll kick it off from the 30. We're at Memorial Stadium in Terre Haute, and here we go at the start of our second half. It's going to be taken by Johnson from his own 12. Towards the middle of the field, trying to bounce it outside, he will. Now back up the middle. Good return by Cornell Johnson. Great field position to start this second half for the Sycamores. A return of 29 on the play. Well, sometimes when you make him run down a second time, they don't go as hard. And uh, you, can, you can sometimes find a crease in there. There's a little hold. The referee misses only a hold if they call it. But uh, this is a good way to start out the second half. Wouldn't shock me one bit, J.J., if we saw Indiana State try to pick up the pace a little bit offensively. That's when they had Southern Illinois on their heels. So Indiana State led by Blaine Baggett, a senior from Commerce, Michigan. Wants to throw the football, swings it left side. The catch by Berman. He's a close to midfield and uh, looks like he picked up 
the first down for Indiana State. It's going to be awfully close. He's going to be just a bit short, it looks like. Ball will rest just shy of that 50-yard uh, line. Second down and two with the ball on the 49. Both these teams racked up combined over 500 yards of offense in the first half. Baggett is 16 of 19 for nearly 200 yards. Berman again picks up a block across midfield. And the clock will continue to run, did not get out of bounds. But he picks up the first down. Frank Johnson, the senior from Obasso, Florida, with the stop defensively. Looks like Southern Illinois is going to stay in the cover two look. They got two safeties back, and they're squatting the corners in the flat. And they tried to you know, let him read that, but they had a guy to block him just to get enough yards for the first down. Andre Forte in the backfield, shotgun by Baggett. Two wide receivers to the right side, one to the left. Baggett rolling right, wants to throw yet again. He does, completion. Driven out of bounds by Clayton Johnson. Catch was made by Sam Logan. A quick right roll, quick roll to the right, and, and he sees his receiver just squatting on the in the flat out there, just waiting. And, and I, I think he had a, a first read that he came off of, and, and that was the second read, and, and it's a good chunk on first down. Well, Blaine Baggett here today, 18 of 21, 188 yards, two touchdowns, his longest completion, 42 yards. And that was a touchdown to Carl Berman. Baggett now under center. Three step drop, backs away from some pressure, throws it away. Again, looking for Carl Berman, and that's been pretty much the only connection, it seems like. Berman and Baggett, or Baggett along with Sam Logan. And it looked like uh, Baggett caught a little wobble here to the receiver to change his route. I don't know if he wants to go fade, but the corner really got a good jam on him and pushed him outside and made him break off his route. Berman with seven catches for 82 yards. Logan with five for 75. A bunch set here. A short third down with time unloads across the middle. That's a first down. Jamie Petrosky with the catch. That's his third grab of the day. More times than not, you're going to see that big tight end just go underneath the linebacking core and pick up the first down. Now, Baggett, he, he's well fundamental, the quarterback. He sets his feet and changes his aggression and goes back, and he sets that passing arrow. That gives him a, a good high percentage chance to throw an accurate ball to his receiver. And, and this kid had some good training. That's why he transferred in, and that's why he's taking all the snaps. Transfer from Western Michigan. First and ten now. Man in motion is Ben Schmidt. Schmidt gets it. He can throw the football. He is looking for Berman and threw it just out of his uh, outstretched arms and the reach there of Carl Berman. We saw a little flea flicker in the uh, first possession. First time for Indiana State. And on the coverage was Frank Johnson. And there they are with that cover two again. And the safety is not biting on anything. He saw the receiver rele releasing outside on the vertical and that's his responsibility to handle any anything vertical coming second down and 10 ball on the 31 of southern illinois Berman in motion and the handoff to forte up the middle andre forte across the 25 and near first down yeah, with the shotgun you have to uh, you have to take advantage of, it, of gaps that are, that are left open and, and J.J., you've got to keep that defense a little honest, too. They're yeah. coming out pass, pass, pass. Mix in the run. It keeps you a little bit honest. All right. Third down and short now for Indiana State. Just over 12 and a half to play, third quarter. Not only will Forte keep him honest, he'll give him something to think about. Baggett from the shotgun. Underneath, it's another first down. Ben Schmidt. The sophomore from Jasper, Indiana, picks up the first down for Indiana State. They're driving here on their first possession of the second half. And this guy's impressive. I mean, he's taking everything they're giving him. He's not trying to make the big play every time. He's just moving the chains, and, and that's a sign of a good quarterback. And he knows his system. Like I say, he, he knows where his guys are going to be. So he, he takes his first read, sets his feet, and goes right to the next guy and puts it right between the numbers. Indiana State is now 6 of 8 on third down conversions. One, nine, go. 
Berman in motion, gets it on a handoff from the shotgun, and Carl Berman is just going to have to step out of bounds, and he lost two on the play. Driven out of bounds by Jamarcus Jordan. This is a hard play to run for the guy carrying the ball because he's, he's going full speed parallel to the line of scrimmage. There's going to come a time where he has to put his foot down and make a cut, but when the defense is playing that zone, you know, he's running right to these guys. And, and a lot of times it's a good play when they run man and those guys run off, but, but in zone, I don't know, they might have to come up with another run. Shotgun, second down, 12. With the ball on the 16. At Southern Illinois, here comes a blitz and they pick it up. And it's swung out to Petrosky. He avoids one tackler and gets it out to the 15 or so. Boy, coming in there rushing hard was Patrick Jordan. You could see Petrosky just get an arm on him to slow him up, and then he received the football. He timed that up well. He, you know, the uh, Indiana State might think about um, changing the snap count a little bit, but, you know, a screen is a perfect a perfect play when they're blitzing because you can catch them off guard, throw it over their head, but, but he timed that up perfect. That means he's getting a feel for the snap count. You can see Royal Whitaker initially had a hand on Petrosky, and Royal Whitaker led the team in tackles a season ago. The faithful of Southern Illinois made the trek here to Terre Haute. Shotgun, stepping up, unloading. Petrosky again inside the 10. And well short of the first down. We've already seen a missed field goal attempt by Kyle Hooper. We'll see what uh, the Sycamores want to do here. Well. You know, take, take advantage of this. This field position and try to put some points on the board here. So for Hooper, 27-yard field goal attempt. And he's six of seven on the year. He hooked his first attempt this afternoon. That one is up on its way and through. 27-yard field goal attempt is good, and it's 28-17. Southern Illinois with 10.34 to go, third quarter. Lou West pleased with that drive. We'll step aside, back with more in just a moment. Well, a little dancing. That's how you stay warm on uh, homecoming here at Terre Haute. 28-17, Southern Illinois with a lead. I'll tell you what, you've got to give Indiana State some credit. They have hung tough. J.J. Smith, Dan McLaughlin with you up here in the booth. My buddy Scott Mormon down on the sidelines. Taken by Whitaker at his 17 and brought down near the 30-yard line. It'll be the first possession of this second half for this wonderful offense of Southern Illinois. Joel Samberski with three touchdown passes in the first half. They piled up nearly 300 yards of total offense in the first half. Samberski was 14 of 17, three touchdowns. His longest completion was 21 yards, and he had 164 that entire first half. Samberski, the senior from Liberty, Missouri, takes over first and 10 with the ball on the 28-yard line. And this is Whitaker, and he's tied up on a good defensive play by Madison Miller, the junior from Indianapolis. It was a good play. He just came backside, and once again, if you're not touched, you're going to be a good, pretty good player in the, in the backfield. They have to account for him on these little draws, and, and usually on the draws, you want these, you expect these guys to drop a little bit or, or take a, a rush towards the quarterback and you get the running back running past them, but that didn't happen. He, right for the running back. Under 10 minutes to play, third quarter. Samberski rolling right. He's got the option play. Keeps it himself. A flag on that play. And he was popped pretty good as uh, Raphael Price was in there on the stop. The holding. Oh, looks like that was a power option. Load option, power option. So holding called against the Salukis of Southern Illinois. If you look here, they just block down. Everybody blocks down and they... They bring the uh, the fullback outside and, and give the quarterback an option to pitch. It's the good old power option, but he's, he can't wrap up. He can't tackle on offense. Pretty good pop here coming up from Raphael Price. And the Sycamores need to use this as uh, as uh, some, some momentum. You know, they, they got him backed up last time. They had him in second and long situation to let him out of the trap. And 
And now they might need to change that defense because you notice that Luke is going to come out looking for that deep out again. Six penalties against Southern Illinois for 50 yards. Now they're staring at a second and 19. With the ball on their own 19-yard line. Sam Bursky to throw. Flushed out of the pocket. Running for cover, that's John Jordan with the stop, the senior from Junction City, Kansas. It's twice now that Sam Berkey has been hit pretty good. As he was brought down in that play, and a pickup of 10 on this scramble. He doesn't make too many moves, he just gets upfield and you get yards, and that's, that's what you want to, you got to get north and south, get upfield. When you talked about Sam Berkey being a very good athlete in high school, he's more of a thrower in a Smart player, cerebral quarterback. Nick Hill, the backup, is a physically gifted young man. Only a sophomore, he'll take over with this offense next season. Sambersky to throw. Underneath, and it's dropped. He had Alan Turner, and I'll tell you what, that's probably the first bad throw we've seen from Sambersky today. Didn't give uh, Turner much of a chance to make that grab, and Turner was their leading receiver in the first half with five catches. Yeah, but if it hits your hands, you're supposed to catch it. And it was low in a way, but you know you got you know a championship team. You make those catches. Yep. Zach Kettlecamp, a sophomore, with his second punt of the day, standing on his 14-yard line. And the kick is away. Fair catch taken at the 32-yard line. That catch made by Berman. He's been outstanding today all over the field. That's a 38-yard punt and a flag on the play. It'll look to be a late flag, too. And again, if you're just joining us, good news on that sideline. Jerry Kill is back, head coach of the Salukis. They're suffering a seizure last week in their ball game right at the end. The tail end with 30 seconds to go and a loss to Illinois State. 8.32 to go third quarter. You can see he's 29-24 all time at Southern Illinois. We're still trying to figure out this call. Well, one was offside, looked like they called that right away and usually downfield it's a hold. He confused himself, and then he confused us. <laughs> Doing a pretty good job of, of officiating today. Haven't seen too many miscues. See college football now, they have the instant replay for Division One, and some people like it, some people don't. Well, that's Philip Doyle down there talking it over with our officials. <laughs> Offsides and holding against the receiving team, which is Indiana State. So now we've got it with the uh, Indiana State football. They scored in their first possession with a field goal. A 27-yarder by Hooper to cut this lead to 28-17, their first possession of the second half. So that'll drive them back deeper in their own territory. And there's Blaine Baggett. They were just fine in taking some of those little dump passes underneath against this defense of Southern Illinois. And Baggett is 22 of 26, over 200 yards. He's been outstanding today. But you can't do it without that protection up front. I mean, these guys that have done a good job of keeping the Salukas off of them, giving them a chance to step in there and throw the ball. Baggett, play action, looking, overthrows his man. To the receiver was Sam Logan. We have not heard the name of Andre Forte much here in the second half. And at the end of the first half, you might remember he was limping off, and maybe Scott Warman can find out more on those sidelines exactly what's taking place with Andre Forte. But we'll see if he gets back in the game. It's been primarily Cornell Johnson in the backfield. And there's Forte on the sidelines. And the shotgun now, it's Blaine Baggett. A little misdirection. Here's Johnson across the 30. Good play. 
And close to a first down for the Sycamores. It was brought down by Derek Belton. Jamarcus Jordan was also in there. Well, now we see that uh, Forte is trotting back on the field, so he seems to be just fine. It was a nice little ramble. Give him a, a chance to, uh, to, you know, get a short yard. You're going to measure, I think, here. Well, against that cover two defense, the best thing you can do is attack it vertically. Get four verticals going upfield and make those safeties have to make a decision on do I take the, the guy running the seam or do I take the guy outside and, and let Baggett, you know, choose who he wants to throw to. Like they did in the first half when they threw the long bomb to Sam Logan. I think that was a 69-yard strike. First down by inches for the Sycamores. You look at time of possession in this game, 1945 for Southern Illinois, Indiana State at 1643. Southern Illinois has run 44 plays offensively, 333 yards, but uh, Indiana State trying to match him. 44 plays, 279. That's not bad at all. Three wide receivers to the right side of the field, one closest to us. Baggett. With Forte in motion. Forte is going to get the uh, handoff. Brought down at the 35-yard line. And usually with an 0-17, you know, you'll normally look for a lot of penalties or a lot of turnovers, but we haven't had that today. This is a sound team, a smart team. They're not making mistakes. They're just think maybe been a little bit outmanned this year. Forte, nine carries, 54 yards. Pick up a two on that play, second down and eight. You're exactly right. I mean, Indiana State, a team that was not even supposed to hang in this game, even though you see the jump down there by the tight end, Jamie Petrosky. But uh, Indiana State's been able to not only hang in, but be competitive in this game and have a chance to drive even closer, down 28-17. See, Lou West is saying, wait a minute, you're the in man. Don't be the one that jumps. you got to see everybody else move. That's you. The first-year head coach, Lou West. Of course, Lou coming from Toledo. They were the MAC champs three of the four years that he was the defensive coordinator there. A lot of people be caught in that position where you jump and you can't help. Sometimes you got to play it off by just going in motion or something just to save the penalty. Shotgun now for Baggett. Second down at 13. <laughs> Petrosky. Met rudely that time, Lionel Williams, a 6'2 senior who is the top sack man for Southern Illinois with the stop. And we're at uh, under a seven minutes to go in our third quarter of play. And penalties will kill a drive. You know, anytime you go backwards, it, it can eliminate the, the you know the first first uh, few plays led to a first down, but. You have penalties like we talked about before. They haven't had too many today, but they want to ruin a drive for you. Third down and 12. Today, Indiana State is 6 of 9 on third down conversions. Bag at the throw. Feels the pressure. Sidesteps a man. That was Wims who couldn't hold on to him. And they want a flag down there, but they're not going to get it. Intended for Sam Logan. And it was broken up by the backfield, defensive backfield of Southern Illinois. And that was Wims who almost got a hand in on him. And that's the play there by Frank Johnson, who was the honorable mention all-conference performer a season ago for the Salukis. And that gave him a chance. He put the ball there for, for him to make the play. And this kid is savvy. He has some, some good things about him. Coming from that MAC conference, they produce a lot of good quarterbacks. Back deep to receive now is Craig Turner, a great all-around athlete. His family was taken out of the state of Louisiana and moved to Houston because of Hurricane Katrina. They've got two players that that has happened to for Southern Illinois. Now they've got a block. They block it. The ball takes a beneficial bounce for Indiana State. And Southern Illinois is going to have great field position. And it was Tony Ranella looked like that got the big old pause on that to make the block. And Southern Illinois is going to have a chance to cash in on this special teams gem. Well, what happens is, uh, you know, after the whole game, they've been, they haven't holding up the, the punt team. They've been backing up, trying to set up a return, and all of a sudden they send pressure 
it catches the punt team off guard. And, and it's always something to learn. Even though you block the punt, there's still something to be learned. You never fall on a block punt. You always have to scoop and score because even if you lose it, you still get the ball back. So, so you, you gotta you gotta take positives out of it. I mean, every positive is still something to get better with. So Tony Ranella, a former walk-on, comes up with a huge defensive play. And now it's Whitlock. Fumble. And Indiana State has got it. Indiana State gets it back. And back-to-back -back big plays in this game as Whitlock coughed it up. Kyle Mitchell. He's a, he's a big time player. He's made some plays today. You know? We have the senior from East Chicago, Illinois. Comes up with another big, big play in this game. Comes from the grip, and there it is. Comes from the backside, wearing that 92. Is he straight hand out here today? He's been like it. He's making big plays, tackles for losses and causing fumbles. 6 11 to go. That's a big, big play. Out of the shotgun now, Blaine Baggett. For Indiana State, Forte trying to bounce it outside, and he will pick up a four on the play for the Sycamores. With six minutes to go, it's 28 to 17 in favor of Southern Illinois. Heavily favored in this game. Last weekend, they were number one in the country. And then they fell after allowing 61 points to Illinois State. Bag it on the afternoon, 23 of 29. Forte again, gets a block, and picks up the first down out near the 30-yard line. You can all of a sudden see, J.J., the momentum starting to swing, and that was such a big, big strip defensively made by Kyle Mitchell to set up uh, the non-touchdown for Southern Illinois. Now, all of a sudden, uh, Indiana State with a little jump offensively. And they keep running that zone, just putting a hat on the hat, letting Mr. Forte do, it, do what he does. And chopping up big yards is what he's doing right now. Moving the chains. Back it, Forte. Another big haul. Diving near a first down. Let's see where they mark it. They're going to give him the first down and pick up of 11 on that play. They said, we're going to do this until you stop us. The same play the other direction. The, uh, the backside guy, he has to stay at home, you know, looking for the bootleg, and that leaves a big gap in there for Forte to get up in there. Four wide receivers to the right side of the field. There's Forte again, same play except for the other side of the line. And they're wasting no time moving the football. That's a worn out defense out there by Southern Illinois. And this is going to force them to, you know, change personnel on the fly and also change their defense because they don't want to keep giving this up. So now they have to bring some heat or, or put some pressure on them. And once the calls are in, they're made. Forte closing in on 100 yards. Swing it left side. This is Cornell Johnson. All kinds of room. And he's inside the 35 of Southern Illinois. Cornell Johnson, they just swung it out to him to the short side of the field and a pickup of 30 yards on the play. Yeah, and I like how they're mixing it up here. They're, they're hitting them everywhere on the field. They're perimeter, they're throwing and hitting them up in the gut. You got guys running in off the field, they're winded. Ball on the 32 of Southern Illinois. Forte, right side. That's a face mask. You clearly see that from here. And he's just kept on running, and he got down to the 25. It looks like it's going to be called against uh, Mark Phillips, who goes at 315 pounds, the senior. That'll be a big one. Now look for that counter off of that, where the quarterback keeps it and comes off the backside, because it looks like it's wide open. That's of the 15-yard variety. He, he grabbed and held on to that one. Oh. First collar, okay. All right. Wow, they're going to say no face mask. So they put the flag back down. Let's see if he caught. Nope, he didn't. It's not the face mask. First collar. He got the collar. That's right. That's good that the refs are communicating, letting them know, hey, he didn't get a face mask. And that, that's that's good by the, by the staff working together and letting, you know, correcting the other guy. Forte, four, uh, 14 carries for 95 yards. Back it under center. Doesn't do that very often. Berman in motion. Berman gets it. Now they give it back to Johnson. Johnson, flag on the play. Gets the first down, but that could be brought back. We'll have to wait and see on this call. A long 
alone on this drive, Andre Forte for Lou West has been the main carrier. He's picked up 42 yards alone on this drive. 42 of his 95. That's going to go against Indiana State with 4-0-1 to play. Third quarter, 28-17, Southern Illinois. The last drive was a lot of Baggett. This one is a lot of Forte. J.J. Smith alongside. Dan McLaughlin with you at Memorial Stadium in Terre Haute. Scott Warman also with us. Out of the shotgun. Baggett, second down and eight. And here comes Southern Illinois showing blitz. Baggett, back to throw. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Recognizes that and gets it out to Ben Schmidt. And he's brought down on the play by Jamarcus Jordan. He along with Frank Johnson. Really a good safety tandem. See him recognize and then go one on one with the outside man. And he puts a lot into those balls, Blaine Baggett does, and he's throwing to the young giant, 6'2, 190 sophomore, Ben Schmidt. Third down and three with 318 to go. Third quarter. Eight of nine in the second half is Baggett and 24 of 30 this afternoon. Gets Johnson out of the backfield. Baggett steps up, delivers, and trying to hit Berman. Threw it behind him. And we said a little bit earlier, change the snap counting, and it helps the uh, protection a lot because it sometimes they'll expose themselves. But this might be the, the only bad ball I've seen Baggett throw today. A little bit off there. And but Kyle Hooper is now going to be on to attempt the field goal. And this is going to be a 42-yarder. He has hit one today, a 27-yard field goal to cut the lead to 28-17. He's trying to cut it now to 28-20. to A 42-yarder. Hooper kicks it up. Short. And it is going to be no good. Well short is Kyle Hooper. That's his second miss of the afternoon. He's one of three. And Lou West has to be very pleased with the way that his club has come out and played in the second half. They trail 28-17 as we step aside. Sam Logan, you haven't mentioned his name too much, number 89. Last year in 2004, he set the school record with 55 receptions in a season. He's knocking on the door this season. Funny story, earlier this season in September, he had 17 receptions against Murray State. He wasn't feeling very good before that game. He went to the doctors on that Friday before the game, and they discovered that he had kidney stones. They gave him the medical clearance, and he comes up with a school record, 17 receptions. He's having quite a career here at Terre Haute, Dan. He's got five catches today for 75 yards. That damage done, though, and you're right, Scotty, in the uh, first half. As Indiana State is trying to pick up their first win of the season. 2.28 to go. Salukis with a second down and three. Zamberski hands it off to R.K. Whitlock. He's short of the first down, and Whitlock had that costly fumble on the last possession for the Salukis. And that's what the block to punt. Sorry about that, but that's what it's going to take for this program to get to the next level. I mean, guys like that, you know, breaking records and Baggett and, and Kyle Mitchell making plays, and it gives these recruits that come see these guys something to look forward to. You know, they're, they're moving in the right direction, and uh, and that's what they're going to have to do. They're going to have to get on the road and get some good players in here and, and turn this program around. Dan McLaughlin, J.J. Smith, Scott Warman with you from Terre Haute. They're closing in on 700 total yards. Short of the first down. They went with the option. Sam Bursky is short. They're going to have to punt it away as Kyle Mitchell once again back in there with a big defensive play for the Sycamores. This is the best offense in this conference, averaging 45 points a game, nearly 500 yards of total offense, number one in the nation in scoring. And yet the Sycamores here on homecoming weekend have turned it up a notch here in the second half. And they're going to have to punt it away. These guys are fighting hard for 0 and 17. They got a lot of heart, and, and it shows a lot about what the coaches is, is preaching. You know, they're still fighting hard. Berman back deep to receive. He is standing on his own, 27. Good kick. And the punter, Zach Kettlecamp. And here comes Berman. A flag on the play. Another flag flies on the play. Nowhere to go for Carl Berman. 
54 yard punt and a four yard return. On these long punts, sometimes you can have big plays, but what you want to do as a return team, you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot. You, if you see numbers, if you see the back of the numbers, you just let up and go find somebody else to block. Don't stick with the guy you're supposed to have if he's beating you. You know, you just got to go ahead and accept it and turn around and get somebody else and hope your returner can make him miss. We saw two flags fly. That's going to be holding against Indiana State on their return, so they're going to be pinned back deep in their own territory. And those are things you got to do in practice. Drills you have to do when you, when you go over that. And sometimes they're overlooked, but they can hurt you, you know, in crucial situations. You know, take 15, 10 to 15 yards off of a, off of a drive. That's crucial. That could have got them close to the goal line the last drive. Southern Illinois better figure out a way to stop Blaine Baggett. He's been outstanding today. 25 of 32, 237 yards, two touchdowns. And they have uh, resulted in two potential scores in the second half. The first time it was good with a field goal of 27 yards. They just missed on a 42-yarder. And this is Baggett working from the shotgun. Trying to get some breathing room. It's Forte brought down at the 10. One thing they tried to stop when they went to the sideline was we're going to stop that run. <laughs> I bet Coach had him over there on the bench and said, this is how we're going to stop that inside zone. And... Uh, Indiana State came out here and tried to run it again, and it just got shut down. And that's what you do when you're a good staff. You make adjustments. Very well could be our final play of the third quarter right here. Forte in the backfield. Shotgun here by Baggett. Baggett hands it off to Forte, and he is met and brought down by Mark Phillips. He goes at 315 pounds, only six feet tall. The kid's in, plus. He's impressive. He made plays in the first half. He, he caught my attention. He's all the way out here from San Bernardino, California. That's a long way from home. Indiana State saying, we still believe. Trying to pick up their first victory of the season. They got a chance. Down 28-17. How about this? Total offense, Southern Illinois in this second half, 20 yards, 125 in favor of Indiana State. Let's check in with Scott Warman. All right, Danny, kind of surprised that second down play right at the end of the quarter for ISU because the game clock or play clock was not on. They could have run another play with the wind behind them on second down, but they decided to go with that final play. Back to you, Danny. All right, thank you. Here's Carl Berman trying to pick up a first down. I think he did. Berman turned on the Jets. Got a few blocks ahead of him. And he has had a big, big afternoon. That's his eighth reception. That one goes for 12 yards. Well, that worked like a charm, and you don't understand how hard this is for a receiver. He has to really trust his offensive lineman on this screen because he's coming through there blind, looking at the quarterback for the ball, and he has to trust these guys that they're going to pick up these blocks. And, and when this thing works, when it's, when it's timed out right, it can be a huge play. Smart, safe play when you're backed up. One of the offensive linemen being helped off the field. That is uh, Zach Odell, a sophomore from Indianapolis. So the right guard is out. Mm -hmm. So Indiana State offense that came in averaging only 12 points a game. Today they have put up 17. They've also had two missed field goals, so it could be much better than that. They want to throw again. Baggett steps up in the pocket, unloads down the middle, and incomplete. Trying to hook up with Sam Logan. And Marlon Heaston in on the coverage there on Logan, who's been quiet in the second half. Let's go back to uh, Scott Warman. All right, thanks, Dan. We see Mike Farrell there. They're working on his eyes. He didn't get injured. He just got, you know, that brown, like, tire-type stuff that they have on this uh, turf down here, and it just got in his eyes, and they're working uh, his contacts, and it looks like he's going to be back out here shortly, Dan. Well, that's actually shredded-up tires, braided tires to soften up the blow of what is AstroTurf down there. They call it field turf. You see that in the pro game, and you also see it now all over the place in college. Logan in motion. Second down and 10. Baggett steps up to throw. Has a man, and just overthrow him, trying to pick up Petrusky. Oh, my God, it's 
great protection there for Baggett. He has plenty of time to step up in the pocket and, and shuffle up twice, and, and that's usually when you can throw those good deep routes there. And he had a man one-on-one. -on -one. You, you got to you know, give him a chance to make a play, but that's a bad angle for, for the quarterback to put the ball in there over the, over the shoulder like that. And uh, usually, you know, but when you when you throw it deep, you do do something to the defense. You make them know, hey, we can touch you over your head. So now that will open it up a little bit on the inside for the, the intermediate routes, like the digs and the, and the uh, you know, the middle routes. Indiana State 7 to 12 and third down conversions. They were happy just going over the middle with those dump offs. But they're trying to go a little deeper here now. Baggett steps up, has a man. Fires out to Schmidt, and they pick up a first down. Ben Schmidt, a 15-yard pickup. This kid, he's, he's. Well, think about this. It's been Berman, Petrosky, Logan, Schmidt, Johnson, Forte, all have had catches today. They've really spread the ball all over the place. First and 10 with the ball on the 35. 14 19 to go. Little misdirection. Cornell Johnson. The tackle made by Lionel Williams. Also in on the play was Royal Whitaker. And his name has not been mentioned all that much here in the second half. Did not play in the first half. He was ejected from their game last weekend, so had to sit out the first half today. Second down and five. Forte. Left side, first down. And they are knifing through this defense of Southern Illinois. That's a pickup of eight on the play for Forte. And you got three down linemen. You're always successful to this uh, to these inside you know inside draws or inside zones. That was Whitaker with stop. They swing it out to Cornell Johnson. Blaine Baggett, folks, is now 28 of 37 and closing in on 300 yards. They've got three down linemen in front there, J.J. That's it, rushing the passer. But when you got this many guys uh, running routes, you've you got to put an extra DB in there. And, and instead of putting one of their big-time linebackers on the sideline, they'll, they'll put one of the slower defensive linemen over there. The defense just seems to be worn out. Tell you one thing, that skate pass is not going to work unless you got some receivers that can block. And Ben Schmidt, the sophomore, that's one thing he's going to have to work on it, is bending his knees and making contact with the DBs and finishing them. Because he's touching them, but then he's looking back at his guy, and uh, that's just not how you get it done. Indiana State came in fourth in passing, over 250 yards a game. Eighth in rushing. Well, rushing has been much better today. But Southern Illinois ranking last in passing defense at 290 yards allowed a game. And this is third and five, third down efficiency, eight of 13 for Indiana State. Third down and five to go. Baggett, Forte, going to get the first down, going to be short of that first down. Cross the 45, but just short of that first down marker, which is planted there on the 42. Let's see if they want to go for it here. And they're going to go for it. Big fourth down play here. They brought an extra big guy in there. The last time they ran the counter in this situation. Four down linemen in front defensively. Tricky. And that's what it was. Snap straight to Forte. Battling for the first down for Indiana State. Keeps the drive alive. They snapped it right back to him. You know, that's where the coaches in the box come in handy. When they, when, uh, when, when Indiana State sent another offensive lineman on the field, well, the Salukas countered by sending another big defensive lineman on the field. And this is some trickery here. They, they, uh, they have to cover the, the quarterback out there when he goes in motion, and, and they just give a direct snap. And that's like a simple power there, downhill power. Baggett, shotgun, looking to throw, unloads. Catch is made once again by Carl Berman. Well, he's picking apart this zone. He just reading and him and the, him and the, uh, the receivers are on the same page. And what you'll see here is the receiver is not looking to the quarterback until he's ready for the ball. And when he's ready for it, he's getting in the middle of that zone and saying, hey, back it, I'm ready. He puts it right on it. Hand off to Cornell Johnson. It's strung out defensively, but Johnson is finally brought down. 
at the 34-yard line. That was play number 38 offensively in the half for Indiana State. On the other side, Southern Illinois only seven plays in the second half for the nation's number one offense. That's how you get back in the game. You keep them on the sidelines. Their big lineup again. Third down. Movement obviously up front. That was Lionel Williams knocking back the center. There's a look at Lionel. The leads her team in sacks of three and a half on the year. You wonder how wiped out that uh, front three is starting to get for Southern Illinois. Right, snap. Offsides. Defense with contact. Wow. Five yard penalty. First down. And just like that, it's a first down for Indiana State. And sometimes you give that to the quarterback. And when you have a savvy quarterback under the center, he can draw that defensive line off sides and change the snap count up. And that's a good time to do it when it's third and short. No one expected this. It's 28-17 in favor of Southern Illinois, but the Sycamores are driving. First and 10 with the ball on the 29-yard line. Baggett. Forte out of the backfield in motion. Baggett wants to throw a little pump fake, and he's going to be brought down. Lionel Williams with his fourth sack of the season, now four and a half on the year. Lionel Williams making up for that miscue that he just had on the uh, offsides penalty. It's pretty mad there, but they got two guys that's supposed to be. He just split the double team, and when they're only bringing three, and you're blocking with five offensive linemen, there shouldn't be anybody getting the bag. But with this big kid here is. He kept driving and split the double team. Second down and 16. Baggett working out of the shotgun. Maybe he still has some tire in his eye. Baggett looking with time. Fires. And he completes it out to Jamie Petrosky. And he's back near the original line of scrimmage. And it brings up a long third down coming up for Indiana State. You've got to wonder, J.J., how much faith they've got in their kicker who is just one of three on field goals today. Kick, kicking days might be over for the day. They got to they put some six points on the board now. Came in today, six of six. Logan in motion. Baggett to throw the football. Steps up in the pocket, no rush. Unloads off the hands of Logan. So big fourth down coming up. He, he knew he had a chance right here to complete this pass. He just was on the move and he overthrew it. It's, you know, he made a couple of missed throws tonight, and this is one of them. But this is a tough throw to, to step up in the pocket on the run off, off one leg and, and, and throwing a strike. And not too many quarterbacks can do that. And uh, but they're going to have to do that. Oh, here he comes again. Well, this would be a 47 yard attempt. Would they try something here? Well, this time. They've got he, the win with them. Yeah, that's the win. One of three on the afternoon is Hooper. Has the leg, and it is good. A 47-yarder. He's saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, and it's 28-20. No one thought this would be the case. Indiana State only down by eight. Big field goal there by Hooper, a 47-yarder. Point lead for 7 Illinois with 10.23 to go. Indiana State looking for their first victory of the season. Coach Southern Illinois was number one in the country last weekend. And this will be taken deep by R.T. Whitlock. Whitlock is going to be strung out close to the 15, still on his feet, and finally brought down. Good special teams coverage by Great. Indiana State. Great coverage. Well, they've only had seven plays offensively in the second half. Have the Salukis of Southern Illinois. And there's 10 13 to go. Top 20 Sports Network poll Western Kentucky, number one. Southern Illinois, number 10. A couple of teams, Gateway Conference. As the lights pop on here at Memorial Stadium, UNI is number 13, and Youngstown State is 15. Those two will hook up at the Uni Dome next weekend. We'll have it for you on the Gateway Conference game of the week. Catch made by Brent Little. And he steps out of bounds. With 10.08 to go in our fourth quarter. 
It's a first down. And just the eighth play of the second half for the Salukis. Joel Samberski on the afternoon is 15 of 19, 176 yards, three touchdowns. And that was all in the first half. Whitlock with the draw, going nowhere. You can see this defense is excited with the chance that they're still in the game, J.J. And that's something that uh, I don't think we can point out enough. Heavily favored were the Salukis coming into this ball game this afternoon. Well, when the cameras are on, you never know what's going to happen. You know, that's why they play the game. And, and this is a game that Indiana State can hang their hat on. They can use this in recruiting. They can use this for, for more money from the alumni. I mean, this will be a big win to, to be the powerhouse in the conference like the Salukas. Madison Miller with the stop there for Indiana State. <laughs> Sam Bursky to throw. And the catch is made by Brent Little. Very close to a first down. It looks like with that spot, they're going to give him the first down. Little has had a big day receiving for the Salukis. That's his fourth catch of the afternoon. Alan Turner has five catches. And these two just make it look so easy. They've been, they've been connecting for, you know, three years now, is it? I don't know. These guys uh, make it look easy. And they like to use that play action to set up their protection. Brent Little was uh, first team all-conference last year. Sam Bursky, first team all-conference and the player of the year. Again to throw. And deflected up front by one of those defensive linemen. As wide open was Brent Little. Looked like Kyle Mitchell got his hand on it. Deflected it. And a stoppage now at 8.56 to go. It's just a little quick out. One, two, three steps and then release it. But, you know, that's one thing about three steps. you got to get the hands of the D lineman down. And, and some, some coaches like to cut the D in, and some coaches just be aggressive with them. But, but that's a big boy over there, and he's making a lot of plays a day. Kyle Mitchell. And that was a, that's, a, that's a big play, and he needs to get in there and get some pressure now. Second down and 10. With the ball on the 39 of the Saluki. Sam Bursky to throw. Unloads, fires, and it's caught across the middle. Alan Turner with the catch. Turner, a big day. That's his sixth catch. And it's a pickup of 18 on the play and another first down. The Sam Bursky comes out and says, I am the player of the conference, the player of the year. And I'm going to show you why. Because, you know, a lot of times you've got a lead in the fourth quarter. You want to put the ball on the ground, let the clock tick. But these coaches have so much confidence in this guy. He's dropping back throwing. I mean, I don't, they've only had a couple of runs on this drive. Alan Turner, only a sophomore. Sam Bursky, the senior, and a finalist for the Peyton Award. Give him the hitch over here. Boy, they're playing off him. Why are they playing so far off? And Brent Little is the tackle was made by Warren English Malone. I mean, he's a good 10 yards back before the play even starts. Well, Coach West does not want to give up the big play. He'll he'll concede the little stuff in the flat, and hopefully these guys will make a mistake, but he's not going to give up the big play. He's going to have to make an adjustment, though. He's 10 yards deep, and that's what you're talking about. You could see it initially. That's why you're saying watch out for the hitch. And, and I think some um, Bursky just checked out of that play, whatever they had called. He just checked out of it and, and called it. But, you, you know, you got to have some faith in the DBs to walk them up there and press them. Turner in motion. Sam Bursky will hand it off. And bouncing backwards is Antoine Jackson, who's been seldom used in the second half. And the stop that time by Brian Jackson out of Chicago, only a sophomore for Indiana State. And the defensive line for Indiana State has been solid today. They, they've not given up too much up the gut. Early on they did, but they've tightened down. But, uh, you know, and, and getting back to it while the DBs are playing off, that's just showing uh, respect for Brent Little. I mean, there's a reason they named him all-conference receiver last year. Third down and four for the Salukis, trying to keep this drive going. Big play. Watch the pressure. Whitlock gets it, and I believe he got the first down. R. Key Whitlock, only a junior from Rock Hill, South Carolina. 
Gets up limping a bit. Whitlock with 16 carries, good enough for 87 yards on the day. Averages 104 a game. So we're going to measure for the first down here. That's awfully close down there. And this angle looks like he has it, though. I know Scott Warman is down there. He's got a good angle. I think he's got it. Yeah, he's got it. First down for Southern Illinois. Jerry Kill on that sideline. Lou West for the Sycamores. Trying to pick up that first win. They love that. His knee hit, though. Yeah. His knee hit at the 30, which would have made him short of that first down. They love that wraparound little blast. We used to call it a blast. And the center blocks back, and the guard wraps around. They just did it to the opposite side. That was a generous spot that time. The Salukis will take it. Their offense should be fresh. They haven't been on the field all that much. Prior to this drive, only seven plays. Sam Bursky to throw. And again, the catch is made by Brent Little. Across the 25. And the catch is made at the 24, so four yards short of that first down marker. Cock, uh, the clock continues to run. We're under seven minutes to play. Receiving today, it's been Turner and Little, Payne. T.J. Wise has a touchdown reception. And Whitlock has a couple of catches out of the backfield as well. Six and a half to go. 69 yards today for Little on six catches. And he walked up on him. Sam Bursky wants to hand it off. He does. Right up the middle goes Antoine Jackson. Inside the 10, inside the 5. Big, big pick up there of 20 yards for the Salukis. We can run it up a defense's, defense's gut. That takes more out of them than throwing a deep pass on them because this is right down the heart. And without the, the interior secure, you can't do much else. You figure one more score, it's going to be awfully tough for Indiana State to get back in the game and have a chance to win it or tie it up. Well, this offense is geared to, you know, put, putting some points on the board. They they do air it out. It's something like one of those option teams that, that's hard to come from behind. So, you know, they do have a chance. Ball is on the four. And they give it to number four, Antoine Jackson. He picks up two on the play. So red zone opportunities, three for the Salukis, and three times they've scored. That play made by Doc Gooden defensively. Andy Jones was also in on the tackle. Under five and a half to play. And fade territory again, and maybe a bootleg might be open. They've yet to score in the second half. And the option's always a good option <laughs> down in this area. Two men in the backfield, T.J. Wise, the fullback, along with Antoine Jackson. Ball on the two, it's Jackson, and he is short. So a third down is coming up. Because that hole would close up fairly quickly. It's there initially. Yeah, it's that wraparound once again where they bring in the guard around into that hole, blocking down with the center and the opposite guard. But this is a serious stand right here. This is a crucial play for the Sycamore's defense. Shelby Smith checks out of the game. Into the game, Damian Black. He goes 310 pounds. He's going to try to step it up the middle. And right up the gut. Whitlock back in the game in the backfield. Whitlock gets it. Whitlock to the end zone, and he's got the touchdown. R.K. Whitlock with the touchdown for Southern Illinois. Well, Southern Illinois faithful that traveled up here to watch the game. They're clapping, and, and this is a good way to come back and respond to a, to a score from Indiana State. And 
That's what a, ch a good team does. They, they they come back and respond, and they didn't just put the ball on the ground. They threw it and made sure they got down the field and punched in the end zone. Extra point. Gives the Salukis a 15-point lead. We'll step aside. It's 35-20 with 4.08 to go. You're watching the Gateway Conference Game of the Week. Southern Illinois on top. So the Salukis trying to pick up their fifth win of the season with a key touchdown there. Prior to that drive, only seven plays. They'd had it on offense. Here's Forte from his own 19. Forte to the 30, to the 35. And Indiana State will have good field position. Let's check in with our buddy Scott Warman. Scott. All right, Danny, thank you so much. You know, we talked about Arky Whitlock starting to break some records or making his name known in all the time records in school history at SIU. Brent Little doing the same thing. Him and Joel Samberski, quite a career under Jerry Kill. Now number two, tied with 20 TD receptions in his career and all time with uh, receptions overall. He's at number six. Meanwhile, Joel Samberski, with just his first half, is now eight all time with passes, passing yards, that is, in the Gateway Football Conference. These guys have had spectacular careers for SIU Carbondale. Dan. In and out of the hands of Logan Scott. Did you notice down there the uh, sidelines as far as the Sycamores and the way that they have played, it's just been completely different from what we've seen coming into this game. Yeah, they, you know, they battled so hard, Dan. I think that that last drive was so huge for SIU, not only because they get points on the board, but just to give their defense a little bit of a breather, too. Back it now, second down and 10. Thank you, Scott. Ball on the 38-yard line. Wants to throw, and he does so, and it's caught by Logan. And he's met rudely, and Royal Whitaker was in on the tackle, along with Derek Belton. They cover two. You just sit and watch everything happen and just react. And you have to be a sure tackler and then just react and come up and make good sure hits. Baggett steps up in the pocket, avoids it, still has time. Looking, looking, he's going to be brought down, and that sideline over there going crazy. And that was Ben Schmidt's fault right there. I'm calling him out because, you know, Baggett is just running and scrambling for his life, and, and in scramble drill, this is what you have to do in practice. When, when this quarterback's scrambling and the, and the route's off, you have to come back to the quarterback as fast as you can and give him a target to, to release the ball to. And if, you, if, you, if he's running to you, you take off down the field, and if he's going away, you come back towards him and get friendly. Derek Belton, the freshman with the pressure there. But Ben will learn that. as He's only a sophomore. He'll get that experience, hopefully, as he goes along. But you can't stand there and watch your quarterback when he's in duress. 3.14 to play. Other games from the uh, Gateway Conference. Illinois State rolls over Northern Iowa. How about that? 38 to 3. So Illinois State very well could be the best team in this conference after putting up 61 points in their last game last weekend. That was against Southern Illinois. Western Kentucky, first quarter, leading Western Illinois 21-7. And Missouri State along with the Youngstown State. Those two will hook up at uh, 5 o'clock tonight. So they're just underway. And the standings. Gateway Conference, Southern Illinois trying to improve to three and one and five and two overall. As we've talked about time and again, Indiana State is winless this year. They're at 0 7 and trying to pick up their first win in 2005. But they have played very tough today and a bit surprising because on paper we thought that this would not be a good matchup, obviously, for Lou West and the Sycamores of Indiana State. He's in his first season trying to turn this program around. They're going to have to go for it, and this is going to be a long fourth down. Fourth down and 12 to go. Forte in the backfield along with Blaine Baggett. Baggett steps up. Looking for somebody, anybody. And throws incomplete. He was trying to get it to Carl Berman. And a turnover on downs. And it's back to the Salukis. And now they can just run out the clock and run themselves to a victory. Yeah, he was looking for something. He searched the whole field. There was nobody open. That was just good defense by, by the Salukis. We 
Now it's when you're going to get a heavy dose of the run game. It's the time when backs love. They know they're getting their rock, and, and just all the other, other goal is is to hold on to the football and get some more yards. 3.08 to go. Saluki's with the football. And that's Whitaker. Bounces it outside. And bottom line, J.J., he just wants to stay in bounds and keep that clock moving. And get some more stats. <laughs> and get some stats, he's right. He knows, he knows he's trying to get the records. And, and uh, you know, every guy wants to play on the next level. And he's seen some of his Conrads from the years, the year past it, to make it and see him playing on TV on Sundays. That's some serious motivation. That makes you lift a little bit harder in the weight room. And, and uh, you know, because you you know, as a kid, you always want to get playing that next level, playing the NFL. Now, T. Whitlock, 103 yards rushing today. Now, the, the 42 Liz, 42 Liz. Whitlock again. Sidesteps a tackler, and he's inside the 25, brought down at the 22. Two and a half to go. I like his footwork. He has a nice little jump cut about himself, you know, and he can get himself out of trouble and get back upfield. And, you know, with, with his um, ability to be able to return kicks and, and, and punts and, and catch the ball, it's just going to, you know, up his chances. Who knows what, what might happen? You know, scouts come rolling in town. You, you run those 40s and those 5 10 fives, and, and they know it's talent over there in Carbondale. And I'm sure they'll be back around those, those, uh, those halls over there. Whitlock with the pitch. And he's driven out of bounds, so that'll stop the clock. Driven out at the 20. He's got to learn to keep that thing in bounds and keep that clock running with 150 to go. 35-20 in favor of the Salukis. And these big boys up front, they've done their job. And uh, last week, Coach said he, he needed to get back to the to the basics, big, get back to the drawing board. These young guys, they said they, they saw some things that they hadn't seen before and they didn't know how to respond. And, and it's good to, to get one under your belt before you go back and to face the number one team in the conference right now, the number one ranked team in the country, actually, and on the ESPN game. 150 to go. That's Whitlock. Inside the 10. Arkea Whitlock. Whitlock is over 100 yards. Antoine Jackson at 57 yards rushing. We've seen Thomas rush for 34 yards. Simbersky near 30 yards, the quarterback. So we approach 90 seconds to go. And whistles down on the play. Looks like a timeout taken by the Salukis. And we'll step aside with 126 to go. The Gateway Conference game of the week. 35-20. And it's first and goal with the ball on the seven yard line. That'll keep the clock running as that play was made by Kyle Mitchell. And it looks like Southern Illinois will be content on just letting this clock run. No need to put it in. Valiant effort put together today by the Sycamores, but they're going to come up short. Kyle Mitchell with a sack there. And that's now 24 and a half career sacks, and that's the all-time record at Indiana State. Clock is running under a minute to go. Let's see if uh, Samberski wants to just take a knee. Hands it off to Whitlock. He's going to have a touchdown. A touchdown for the Salukis of Southern Illinois. Whitlock with a 14-yard touchdown run. The icing on the cake for Southern Illinois. It's right up the gut. You know, he, he didn't get touched. They could have run out the clock, but they're giving it to him. I mean, they're going to take it, I guess. Comes the extra point. 
That's good. That makes it a 42-20 lead in favor of Southern Illinois. Rolling to victory number five. Well, I can think the only reason that they want to make that score happen is to try to make it even look more impressive, this victory today, so they can move up further in the polls. They're number 10 in the country. And there was no need for the score, but they took it. Derek Williams on the return here for the Sycamores, and he's brought down at the 33-yard line with 34 and a half to go. 42-20, Southern Illinois will improve to 5-2 and two on the year. And for the Sycamores, will be another loss. They're going to drop to 0 and 8 and lose on homecoming. We will be at Northern Iowa, the Unidome, next weekend. 3 o'clock with our kickoff on most of these stations. Central time. 34.5 seconds to play. Fourth quarter, valiant effort by the Sycamores. As they're going to throw the football as they take a man in motion, that's Carl Berman. And again next weekend, Youngstown State at UNI. UNI beaten today by Illinois State Saturday. Next weekend, 3 o'clock Central Time. We'll kick it off in our Gateway Conference Game of the Week. And this should do it. Down to six seconds, five seconds. Or maybe not. <laughs> A false start against the offense. It's Damian Black. That'll do it. And that's it. Southern Illinois on the road goes to five and two, 42 to 20. They beat Indiana State on their homecoming. For J.J. Smith and Scott Warman, I'm Dan McLaughlin, our Metro Sports crew as well. Thanks for being with us. We'll talk to you next Saturday from the Unidome in Northern Iowa. Have a great night.